Today, I'm gonna show you how I made this shooting star animation from a recent client project we did called Cowboy in Space. For that, I did use Trap Code Particular, but I wanted everyone to be able to follow along, so I recreated it using the built-in CC Particle World effect. So as long as you have access to After Effects, then you should be good to go. It's actually quite a repetitive process, so I figured I'll break down the main parts so you can get an idea on how to go about creating this from scratch. But I will also provide this as a template on my Gumroad page. There you can even find project files from previous tutorials on the channel, which is a great way to support us along with YouTube channel memberships, which includes a tier that gives you access to all of those project files for free. So here we are now in After Effects, and one important thing to note is that I'm using 32 bits Per channel for the entire project and that's because we want as much data to work with so in the case of these particles blending with each other if you were to use 8 or 16 bits per channel we would get this very washed out look whereas with 32 bits per channel we can get values that are higher than 1 so if we open up the info panel and then hover over this part here or maybe even this part, you can see up here on the top right corner, the RGB values are actually going over one. So that's what allows us to get these very hot spots, which is especially useful when we use glow effects as well. As for the compositions, this entire project is made up of three compositions. Ignore the simulation 4K. That's just a 4K version of this same comp in case you wanna use 4K resolution. But I would advise not to use the 4K version just because these particles are quite soft looking so even if it was in 4K, you wouldn't really be able to notice much of a difference. And on top of that, it renders super slow. So first of all, in the simulation comp is where we do all of the particle animations. And then we bring that over to the composite comp, which is where we combine it with some stock footage or any footage that you might have. In my case, I'm using stock footage from Envato Elements, which is actually today's sponsor, but we'll get to that in a moment. And if we shut off the simulation composition, you can notice there's some displacement underneath the particle simulation. And for that, I use the displacement map effect and use the exact same animation of the shooting star as a displacement map to drive that effect. Additionally, I did some time remapping with the enable time remapping feature just to make it seem like the shooting star is kind of building up speed and very quickly flies past the camera when it gets closer. And you can notice there's some camera shake at the end, which I've achieved by using a transform effect on an adjustment layer and then used a wiggle expression. So all in all, that's the entire setup. But before we start breaking things down in more detail, let's take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Envato Elements. Envato provides a huge library of creative assets such as graphic elements and templates, stock footage, music, sound effects, fonts, and much more. On top of that, it offers unlimited downloads with an affordable subscription. So if you're interested, I have provided a link down below in the description, which will take you to their website. And of course, if you do decide to register, I get to earn a commission. So all of these particle systems are being driven by this single 3D null called particles control. And you can see here, if I move these points, everything moves with it. And to achieve that, I use some expressions on the particle layer. So let's select one of them. And then over on the producer, you got X, Y, and Z with red values. That means an expression has been applied to them. So if I double click on it, it will reveal that value in the timeline. And then we can drop this down. So it's a couple of lines with some simple code that tell this particle system to grab the position from the X value of this particle control. And you actually don't have to understand this expression at all. I'll make sure to leave it in the description down below so you can copy and paste it. And if we double click on the Y and Z values, you can see we got a similar expression for both of those with some minor changes. And as you can see, this particle animation is made up of two core elements, let's say, the soft streak and then the core thick streak. And on top of that, we got small, medium, big, and energy particles all getting combined on top of the main two elements to give us this result. So it's all about layering multiple elements to get a more detailed look. So if you select the core streak element, we can solo it for a moment. First of all, I set the gravity to zero so the particles wouldn't fall down, tweak the velocity in all of these other settings, and then animated the birth rate and longevity to determine how many particles we get and how long they last on the screen. So if I hit U to bring up the keyframes, you can see there's the birth rate and I'm animating it to go from five to zero on the last keyframe. And you can see that these are actually hold keyframes. So if we control click on them to switch them back to linear keyframes, we can right click, 
toggle hold keyframe, which means that the birth rate will stay on five unless we hit another keyframe which has a different value, in this case, zero. And the reason I did that is because if I were to have these set to linear keyframes, I would have to bring them in very close to each other, basically one frame apart. But that's a bit tedious in case I wanna make changes. So I just move them apart like so and then toggle the hold keyframe. I could have also set this keyframe to be at the beginning, so I know, okay, it's on the first frame. But the problem I have with that is that I have to go back, make changes to it, and then move back forward, maybe halfway through the animation, to see how it looks like. Of course, I can still have my playhead at this point in time and then double click on the keyframe so I can make changes to it and see it update. Okay, maybe not, it's not updating unless I hit okay. So that's the problem, I guess. So let's control Z to undo and we can bring it closer to this point and then have the playhead on it and then just tweak this and see it update in real time. And that birth rate animation is applied to every single one of these. And it's also based on the 3D null animation. So the reason why this stops at this point is because the 3D null moves off screen at that point in time. So keep in mind that you have to tweak these keyframes depending on your 3D nulls animation. Animation. So for the particles themselves, if I go ahead and shut off these blur effects, you can see that it's a simple circle particle sprite. And we actually don't have an option for a solid looking circle shape in the CC particle world effect, we have the shaded sphere, we have the faded sphere, which is a soft looking circle. So to work around that, I used the textured square particle type and then created a white circle shape inside of another comp, which has 32 by 32 pixels and a matching composition size, as you can see here, and then use that as the texture layer. But then of course, I didn't want to see these individual particles. So I used some blur effects to soften everything up and then a vector blur on top to give this sort of energy look. If we scroll down, you can also notice the birth and death size. There's some size variation. I also toned down the max opacity. So you could kind of see through these particles. In fact, you can even go lower, but I found that 50% is the sweet spot. And under that, you might actually miss this option sometimes, but we get this opacity map, which determines the opacity of the particles over their lifetime. So across four seconds, which is the longevity in our case, this is what the opacity is gonna be like for these particles. So you can have them fade in and the beginning and then fade out at the end. And also to smooth out this map, you can hold down control to get this different symbol and just click and drag with your mouse to smooth that out. But let's go ahead and draw this in like it was before. I believe it was something like this and then we can smooth it out. So the particles will pop out as soon as they're born and then slowly fade out towards the end of their lifetime. So you can notice how they're fading out at the end here. And then the other thing you might notice is the coloring. So I have that set to birth to death. So there's a different color when these particles are born and then they fade into another color towards the end of their lifetime. And to make this more noticeable, here you can see if I change this to red, they're red at the beginning and they turn blue towards the end here. And actually I didn't want these to be black and white and then colorize them after because I kind of wanted to get a sort of base value for these particles. And the blue color actually made it easier for me to do that. But you'll see later that I actually tint them back to black and white with the FX adjustment layer and then add color back in with the color vibrance effect. But let's unsolo that for a moment. And then let's take a look at the soft streak. So this is pretty similar, except I'm using a lot more blur. You can lower that down if you don't want that to be as soft. But the thing is that I want a very soft looking trail. So that's why I set it to 100. In fact, you can leave this to 50 and then duplicate it and then type in softest streak and then set this one to 100. And now you have a very soft looking glow. In fact, I actually quite like that. So we'll leave it in. Then moving on to the particles, we got small ones first. You can see I increased the velocity a bit so they shoot outwards. And then also the inherit velocity option. And the best way to showcase what this does is to increase the inherit velocity a lot. So you can see it's tied to the movement of the 3D null. So depending on what direction the 3D null is moving, the particles will carry through that movement. But you can set this value to a minus and it will actually shoot away from the direction of your 3D null. But that's a bit too intense, so we'll leave it at minus 10%. And as you can see, I've made birth and death size changes. So these start smaller, but then get bigger over time. Then we get the medium particles, which as you can see, have a lot more velocity to them as well as gravity. So they're being pushed upwards, but I have the resistance set to five. So without it, it would just explode upwards and never stop. But with some resistance, they very quickly shoot out, but then slowly come to a stop. 
Then there is the big particles. This time there is no gravity. There is still some resistance. The inherent velocity is quite high. You can see it's 100%. And I've also increased the birth and death size, obviously, because these are big particles. And then finally, the energy particles, which as you can see, look quite interesting. And that's got to do with the vector blur. So this has got an insane amount of vector blur. And that's what gives this sort of energy look. And to blend in all of those particle layers, I've used different blending modes such as screen and add, and also tweak their opacity values. So some of them are higher than others. And I also enabled the motion blur, which we can see if we toggle it for the composition. And if we right click and go over to composition settings, under advanced, you can see that I've set the shutter angle to double what the original value is and also increase the samples to 32 just so we don't see any gaps in between the motion blur samples. And that way we get a much more intense looking motion blur. Now at this point, it's a bit too intense. So let me just turn off the duplicate soft streak we made. If we go back a bit, you can notice there's a lens flare as well. And that's this layer, which is just the default built-in lens flare effect. And if I shut off these effects, you can see that it has some color by itself. So I tinted it first and then use the color vibrance effect from Video Copilot, which is totally free by the way, just to give it a bit of blue and then blurred it out because there's some elements here that are a bit sharp. And then I couldn't just parent the flare center to the position of the 3D null because this is a 2D value as you can see whereas the 3D null has X, Y, and Z. So a workaround is to create a 2D null first. And then here, I'll do it from scratch. I can alt click to disable the expression and then alt click again to re-enable it and then parent it to the layer itself. And before you let go, type in dot two comp, open parentheses, open square bracket, zero comma, zero comma, zero and then click away. That makes the 2D null follow the 3D null's position. And then I parented the flare center to the 2D position of the 2D null. And finally set the blending mode to add so it would composite back on top because without it, it actually just generates a black background. So you can see there's no transparency. So we'll set this back to add and, and voila, cinema. And for some extra spice, we have an effects adjustment layer all the way on top. If I disable all of these, I can take you through them one by one. So first I have a tint effect to remove all of the colors. Then I'm using the color vibrance effect to assign whatever color I want. I quite like this effect because it gives you a lot of control and very rich looking colorization. Then we got some built-in glow effects and then the other is giving us this broad glow. And finally, we have some quick chromatic aberration by plugging everything just to give some color separation. And that adds a bit more character. And that's being then brought into the composite comp to be combined with some stock footage in our case. But let me real quick disable the displacement. I want to show you something. So we'll disable the unmolt effects. And as you can see, we have a black background because of the lens flare. And at first you might think, well, let's set this to screen and that will remove the black background. But let me just take a screenshot and then we'll set this back to normal and re-enable those two effects. And then take a look at the difference. So you can see here under the city lights, we can see through to those with the screen blending mode whereas with the unmold, we keep the visibility of the core of the shooting star. And we can delete these just so I can show you how you can apply that effect. So just search for unmold and you'll get this preset called alpha from lightness, unmold, and then drag and drop that into the simulation comp. For the displacement, again, I'm using the displacement map effect. I have just duplicated this simulation comp and then used a tint effect because without it, first of all, we have color, but if we just reset this to be black and white and then turn this off so we can see the displacement, it has an effect on the entire image. Whereas how the displacement effect works is whatever is gray. So that means 50% pure gray is not affected. So that's why I set all of these black values to be 50% black and in that case, case, everything that is white is what's displacing the image, but everything that's gray is not displacing the image. Now with the simulation on top, you might not be able to notice it as much, but let's say I can turn on some other stock footage that I have, maybe this one with the trees, you'll be able to better notice that displacement on the trees. So there it is. Look at that sweet, sweet displacement. 
And then finally, we have the camera shake adjustment layer on top, which you would have to tweak the timing of the keyframes if you wanted to, and even the intensity. And here, I'll go ahead and disable this and then create another adjustment layer, call it camera shake tut. And to get that same setup, I can search for wiggle dash position. This is the preset I'm looking for. Click and drag that in. And if we scale this up, you can see it's scaling up from the top left corner. So I wanna set the anchor point to 960 by 540, which is gonna be the center of our 1080p comp, but then we also want to shift the position the same way. And now you can see it scales up from the center. So let's say set it to about 110. And the position of this transform effect is tied to the speed and amount values up here. So let's say I want this to wiggle five times a second by maybe 10 pixels. Maybe that's not too much. So let's say 20 times a second by 50 pixels, and that's going to go crazy. And then what I've done is I've animated the wiggle amount to go from zero up to 50 and then way back down to zero across two seconds or so. So that's the camera shake setup. And one final thing I wanna show you before we wrap this up is the time remapping. So if I hit U on the simulation comp and then U on the displacement map, those have the same time remapping. We want that, of course, because then we would have the displacement be out of sync with the simulation if they didn't have the same time remapping. But I'll duplicate it and then disable the time remapping. We'll solo it out for a moment and I'll go back inside of here. We'll turn off the effects and also the motion blur so we can render things a bit faster. And we'll right click time, enable time remapping move forward in time here to maybe this part where we want the particle system to speed up and kind of very quickly shoot across frame. And we'll set a keyframe there and then move forward to about here, set another keyframe. And we'll go over to maybe let's say nine seconds. We'll set a keyframe here. And then we'll just drag these last two keyframes over to the left. So this period now takes a lot shorter. And now if we preview this, it goes slow and then vroom. And to make that more noticeable, we can make even more extreme. As you can see on the original one, I did add a few more keyframes to dial in the timing and everything. The time remap function is a quick and easy way for you to adjust the speed of your simulation instead of having to do that on the 3D particle control node. And that's pretty much the whole setup. Now, if you wanna use this effect for your own shots, you would have to first bring them into the simulation comp. And you can see if I disable the shy button, that will reveal the same stock footage elements that I have here, except they are set to guide layers, so they won't show up in any other comp compositions. That way I can just use them as reference in this comp. And then let's say disable the effects adjustment layer so it's not too distracting. Maybe disable the motion blur for the time being. And then we can make changes to this. So let's say adjust the position to instead go over to this side, maybe tweak this one, do something like that. And then when we move over to the composite comp, we can re-enable that same shot with the effects adjustment layer. And very quickly we created another variation for a different shot. Of course, keep in mind that you can tweak the timing of this 3D null, change the color of it. So let's say we want fireball looking star. You can then tone down the glows, maybe even shut them off if it's a bit too intense. You can tweak individual particle settings. And once you're happy with everything, you can render out this composite comp. And in fact, let me just do that real quick. Now you know for sure this is what you want to render. So there you go, a shooting star animation template created by using only built-in and free tools that you can very quickly and easily customize for use in your own projects by again grabbing it on my Gumroad page for just a few bucks in case you want to save yourself some time. If you found this useful, then make sure to hit subscribe and turn on the bell for future videos, as well as check out previous tutorials on the channel, as I'm sure you'll get a lot of value out of them. Thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.